All right, moving on to the step where the actual data matching and connections happen. For that reason, I'd say that the identity resolution step, the third step, is the most important step in the ID graph creation process. And if you watched our video on data clean rooms, you'll recognize this. And I, I'll get to how it all ties together later in this video. But um, identity resolution is the process of matching data points from various sources to create a unified view of an individual. Um, and put more simply, it means linking different pieces of data, different identifiers to a unique individual. And if these data points are successfully matched to form a profile of an individual, then that means that that specific identity is quote unquote resolved. And note that the process can be extended beyond you know, actual just individual users. It can be extended to other entities. So for example, you can do identity resolution for households also. And identity resolution, which is also often referred to simply as ID resolution, it's another, it's another word that comes up a lot these days, and it's really important to understand the concept because it's what basically enables most, if not all, audience and personalization-based use cases in MarTech and AdTech these days. So here we have a visual representing the before and after for the ID resolution process. In the before, we have a collection of ingested normalized IDs and data points. And then in the after, so post ID resolution, we have a collection of resolved identities or unified user profiles, which will then go on to form our ID graph. Um, to help visualize what a unified user profile looks like, at least in the abstract, picture a multiple hub and spoke model where each hub represents a core piece of identifying information relating to a given user, such as email address, phone number, device ID, and then these hubs act as central nodes that then connect to various spokes. And since individuals have multiple identifiers, so you know different email addresses, different phone numbers, different devices, different logins, these hubs aren't isolated. They're linked together to form a comprehensive view of the individual's identity across the digital and physical world. And the spokes are the different supporting data points relating back to each hub. These can be other identifiers or behavioral interests or demographic data. Needless to say, ID graphs aren't static. They're dynamic with new spokes being added as users interact with different devices and platforms. And then the hubs are also constantly updated and interconnected as more um, data becomes available, reflecting the evolving nature of a user's identity over time. There are two categories of matching that form the identity resolution process, and these are deterministic matching and probabilistic matching. Deterministic matching uses exact identifiers to link data points to individual users with certainty. These exact identifiers are common IDs or a set of common IDs called join keys or match keys, and they can differ and vary depending on the context and the data sources involved. So examples can include hashed email addresses or login data or even a unique ID assigned by the ID graph. But really anything that's unique to a user can be used. This method, um, as you would expect, provides a very high level of confidence in the accuracy of the matches because it relies on unique and verifiable data. Um, deterministic matches essentially form the foundation of an ID graph or what's also referred to as an ID graph's data spine. Um, in contrast, probabilistic matching uses statistical algorithms to infer the likelihood that different data points belong to the same individual based on patterns, behaviors, and non-unique identifiers. So um, this could be IP addresses, though that's probably going to go away um, in the near future, um, device types, browsers, and um, even like the settings on the device, so like OS, screen size, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this method complements deterministic matching by essentially filling in the gaps and extending the reach of identity resolution where um, deterministic data might be sparse or fragmented. And like any other algorithm, the performance of this method improves as more data is collected, which um, refines the accuracy of the refined, um, sorry, refines the accuracy of the inferred matches through continuous analysis. As you'd expect, the two methodologies are complementary and work in tandem, providing the, the following benefits. So more comprehensive user profiles with deterministic matching providing the solid 
core of linked identifiers, whereas probabilistic matching adds layers of inferred connections that result in um, extended, more complete user profiles. This also creates um, increased match rates because by combining both methods, ID graphs can achieve higher match rates than using either method alone, as probabilistic matching can link records that deterministic methods might miss. Um, the two methods also help balance scale and accuracy, whereas deterministic matching ensures accuracy uh, or as much accuracy as possible, whereas probabilistic matching provides more scale, which allows marketers to reach um, larger segments of their audience with a uh, reasonable degree of uh, confidence and accuracy. And then um, continuous improvement. So as new deterministic data becomes available, that can strengthen the data spine that we mentioned, which can validate and strengthen the probabilistic inferences, which leads to a, a continuously improving, ever improving ID graph. Now, it should be mentioned that certain probabilistic matching methods, most notably device fingerprinting, have and are under greater scrutiny given the evolution um, and greater importance placed on user data privacy. The lines between what's acceptable and what's shady when it comes to probabilistic methodologies is a bit of a gray area in the industry, and um, the goalpost will shift sometimes depending on the incentives and who you ask, so it's definitely something to keep in mind.